Hello and welcome to the first of a brand new series that will be airing live on my YouTube channel. I'm Gaff Thomas and today we'll welcome you to Weekly Motorsports. This series is basically going to be all things motorsport. Down here is where you're going to find my subscriptions to my Instagram, which is at uh, Gaff Thomas 2000 at Twitter, where I'm at Gags Thomas uh, OO, and YouTube where you'll find my name, Gareth Thomas, and the video. So, what happens now? Obviously, if you're wondering why I'm doing a motorsport video, that's why I'm here to talk about it. Obviously, not your politics, with the views as it is, would not have worked. I know it would have done, had someone more professional would have done it, but I w would not, have got as much views as I would have hoped. That's why I'm giving it the X. Gareth Thomas reporting will still be a reoccurring thing. I thought, get something that you can get more views, and this would be the right one. So, obviously, that's why I've chosen to do this weekly remote spot. So, every week, on most weeks, obviously that would be on air. I will discuss different motorsport from Formula 1 to MotoGP to Superbikes to IndyCar to World Endurance and so on. And I will go through them all one by one. Obviously this week we're going to go through all the things on motorsport and then next week we'll go through a couple and then do for all bit by bit one thing at a time on this uh, on these series of videos obviously 10 subscribers at the moment I do hope to get to 100 maybe a thousand maybe more if I can be cheeky in my way out first up you're going to as I get my mic uh, set up properly Formula 1 Last weekend we had the Bahrain Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton won from Max Verstappen. Qualifying had Verstappen on pole, but Mercedes had their brains ready with their strategy, which Hamilton pitted before Verstappen on both occasions. Four laps in the first uh, pit stop phase, ten laps in the second phase, leading to a ding-dong boxing fight between Hamilton and Verstappen. Obviously Verstappen tried to get past Hamilton on the outside or turn four, but he had to give the position back because it was would have been deemed illegal had Verstappen kept it. Hamilton still fought it out and on worn out tyres he beat Verstappen. Formula One went back to April eighteenth when they race at Imma for the Emil Romana Grand Prix. Obviously, the one thing that I enjoy about Formula 1 this year is on the dot start times with with o'clocks. I didn't like it when it was 10 past. Obviously, it makes it easier for rounds like Portugal and Britain, where it's our local times, uh, 3 o'clock, and obviously European being 2 o'clock. Obviously, the one thing that I would improve on an event like Bahrain is to have the start times a bit more later. So that we can get more night running. That's the one thing that I would advise Formula One to do in the future. Obviously, brand new cars, uh, not brand new. The what I was trying to say revised cars from last year. The new cars that were supposed to come in this year have basically been axed for next year, up until up until next year because of the pandemic. Most of the races were fans if allowed we don't know about the next few ones whether fans will be allowed we know Azerbaijan in June will run behind closed doors apart from that nothing has been official as of yet but we can confirm <laughs> and this is subject to rules in the UK that the British Grand Prix would go will have fans but this is subject to all the restrictions we know that Several events later in the year 
maybe at full capacity. Obviously, with a 23-way season, Australia was postponed from March 21st to November because of the pandemic, because Australia wants Formula 1 to quarantine. They couldn't agree to it. They've already postponed China. It might even be cancelled for a number of reasons, which I will not get involved in saying. Obviously, what about the other countries? Portugal, Imola, we do not know. But it's looking more likely to go ahead in rounds like Portugal, Imola, Monaco. But we'll give you an update during the next few telecasts. Because it's going to be on air every Friday. Previewing each race weekend on different kinds of motorsport from everything. So after round one, Hamilton leads for Stappen by a few points. And the next round is Imola. We'll talk about MotoGP next. Different riders on different bikes. Obviously, Valentino Rossi's moved to the Petronas team, which runs Yamahas, running the same series of Yamahas as the Works guys, which Vinales has stayed, but they got Fabio Quattawaro alongside, who was previously riding in the team that Rossi now is in. Obviously, the one thing that surprised me out of that what was that uh, Franco Morbidet did not get a 2021 spec uh, Yamaha whereas the others have got 2021 specs obviously Morbidet has got a 2020 spec but in my view I think he deserved it after his victories last year obviously first round in Qatar Vinales won ahead of the two Ducatis where Yohanzaku in a Primac run, Ducati was second ahead of Bagnar in a works Ducati who was third. They both jumped Joe and Mir on the straight because Ducatis are so fast on the straight, especially in MotoGP. And when you have speed, then you know Ducatis are going to be quick. And obviously, what Valentino Rossi did not have a good day, he makes problems with the rear tyres were the problems while you drop back. The new tyre prob- uh, tyres have caused problems to KTM. Obviously, this year looks better for a Prairie because of the better bike. Next weekend, obviously, still in Qatar, still at night. A lot of people, including me, are disappointed that we didn't get one day race, one night race, because you would have two different races. And possibly two different winners, but obviously the heat in Qatar in April is not the best. That's why they put the World Cup in 2022 to November, December. Obviously, <coughs> this bit I'm not going to comment on, but I know we will have a look at that near, near the future. Obviously, the Moto2 race, Sam Lowe's run. Congrats to him. Obviously, could it be easier this year? Yeah. Could he be in MotoGP next year? We hope so, but we don't know. Next up, Extreme E. Obviously, they've got a brand new car and a brand new series. So Extreme E is a off-road electric racing series that will go across five different areas of countries Racing with some of the best drivers. They will have one female driver, one male driver, 10 or so different teams. Jensen Button's doing it as a driver and as an owner. Lewis Hampton's doing it as a team owner. Nico Wasberg's doing it as a team owner. Carl Sainz is doing it as a driver and owner. Lots of names including Sebastian Loeb, Carlos Sainz Sr., Jensen Button, and so on that are competing. It's a, it's a series. That will have a lot of questions and answers, and we'll get the answers on Saturday and Sunday. Obviously, it's quite tricky to inform you on how these um, schedules, because different time zones on all five races, obviously, not the easiest to negotiate around. And we will, of course, uh, keep you up to date during the year about Stream E. Obviously... 
new car obviously if you saw top gear ready front off tested it he said it was impressive and it runs out of battery in 20 minutes and not only that because that was the unlimited one they might have a set limit we don't know we have to wait till saturday when we see it with the main race on sunday because they do qualifying heats semi-finals and then the main final on the sunday afternoon which is Saudi time because we're f because of a two to three hour time difference <coughs> obviously would the stream e work work I hope so and I hope it can be good I just need to get my drink because I forgot it empty now but I will go along for another 10-15 minutes to get the program done we had Formula E early in the year which is an electric motor racing series Nick DeFries won race 1 Sam Bird won race 2 DeFries leads Bird by 7 points but we know anything can happen within the next few races also we need to keep an eye on that because Anything can happen. This could be Bird's best chance to win a title for Jaguar. Indy car racing, they were supposed to start in March and end in September. It's going to start later and end later. Because first off, Long Beach was postponed from its late March, early April date to September as the season finale. St. Pete was pushed back from March to April. Barber was pushed back one week so that they can allow a condensed schedule which means more people will be off during the off season which makes it easier for teams to do their financial stuff during the off season obviously in about financial this year formula one has a budget cap of 145 million dollars it was supposed to be 175 but the pandemic hit obviously do i think it's good yeah let's hope it could be much fairer racing and with less downforce, you're definitely going to have better racing at tracks like Monza. And definitely faster. Also, while in two rounds done, it is looking quite good. Obviously, Sweden was cancelled, Britain was cancelled. Sweden was because of the pandemic, uh, Britain was due to the financial problems. Obviously we had Arctic Finland and we're going to have Yeeps in Belgium. Will any of that go ahead? Well we know that Arctic Finland went ahead. We don't know about the following rallies because of the current uh, pandemic problems in Europe. And about Europe, WC are, supposed to, are starting their season in May in Europe. At Spa and then Portimao in June. It was supposed to be in April. But that was pushed back to condense the season further. Portmail replaced the Sebring round, which was supposed to be held in March. That was cancelled because of the pandemic. And then ones are in July. I have question marks whether that will work because they said of previous races being boring. Le Mans in August. How is that going to work? Because it's supposed to be in June, put back to August to allow fans to attend. I'm not sure that's going to work because France had just gone into a lockdown a couple of days ago. Also, in August heat, fans are going to be sweating their heads off and the drivers will be sweating their balls off, basically, the best way to say it. Obviously, after Le Mans, it'll be Fuji and then the season finale in Bahrain. Bahrain's going to be shortened to six hours instead of eight. The one thing that I would improve on Bahrain is to have it started at 5pm and end by 11 so you get the entire race under the floodlights. Other tracks do have floodlights, I know Le Mans runs at night, but we, but it has not the lighting that tracks like Bahrain and Abu Dhabi would have. Obviously we will 
go through anything and everything during that if you are new and want to subscribe hit those buttons below first one is my youtube channel with gareth thomas next one is my instagram which is at gareth thomas 2000 and the third one is twitter at gareth Tom at gareth thomas oo i know it's all new to you to see a motorsports program on here i love my motor racing and my motorcycling obviously we will discuss road races in the uk in northern ireland when that comes along we will discuss indianapolis when that comes along we will discuss some more when that comes along so i will do separate videos with a preview on that maybe incorporate it i will have to see how that goes but we will do one thing at a time for you guys the viewers because you guys are much more important to see how good my type of programming is to be judged as a good journalist if i am to show my humor and to bring the content to your screens either by tablet by phone or by television or by a widescreen tv obviously nightly politics has been canned weekly remote sport is here and it's a lot more relaxing obviously for those that don't know i had to postpone my closure for months i thought about it this was probably the most better solution to do which was focus on the motorsport stuff because i am a motorsport fan so that i can do that i hope you guys have enjoyed it remember to like the video because i know you guys want to see more subscribe to the channel i'll bring you more content you guys can see it and also please share it because i can get more fans you guys can share it you, you get them to follow me and you get more videos from me hopefully that's the deal for everyone obviously i'll be back next friday because it's an every friday series where well, I look at weekly motorsport to look at what will happen that week if there isn't any then I will not do a video but I will but I will definitely do a video on the review of Qatar for the second Doha race and the first Extreme E race if there's no other motorsport that weekend I'll probably shorten it to just that anyway i know you guys have enjoyed it i know you guys are currently impatient at the moment but anyway i'm gav thomas thank you for watching and i hope you guys can see me again next friday where we review the motor gp race from qatar the second one and the first ever extreme e-race in saudi arabia what could possibly go wrong anything can happen well that's all i've got to say thank you for watching i'll be back next friday and i'm gonna say so long and goodbye